Hello everyone, we are here at the BlizzCon, still 2015 in Anaheim and I'm here together with David Kim. Hey man, nice to have you here actually. Yeah. And thank you for your time because this is actually your last interview before you mm -hmm. watch the final of the StarCraft 2 WCS. Oh yeah, for sure. It's very exciting because uh, it's live versus SOS finals, two of the former BlizzCon winners. What, what do you expect? I mean, we talked a little, a little mm -hmm. bit about it, but what are your expectations? I don't know what I expect, but I want to see the game, the series going to the seventh game, and then as long as each game is very close, I think that's the best case, in my opinion. For the people who might not know you, mm -hmm. or pro probably not in the StarCraft 2 scene, mm -hmm. what are you doing at Blizzard? Uh, my name is David Kim, and I'm the lead multiplayer designer on the Star StarCraft 2 team, so um, I'm working on the multiplayer part of StarCraft 2. The first and most important question for you is, mm -hmm. there's a lot of rumors, always uh, have been, are you actually a Grandmaster player? I was. I haven't been for a long time. Um, but I've been managing to stay in Master all throughout uh, until now. And then I, I expect to get into Master again in Legacy of the Void because I know the game a little bit more so than at the beginning anyway. Yeah, right? at least. Um, so I have that edge. Uh, slightly unfair edge, but I, I, I guess I have that. Um, but the question for me in terms of playing StarCraft II is how long can I remain at that level, because like eventually I'll fall out because there's so many good players out there, and once I lose that slight edge, I'll fall out. But it's just it's just a cool like mini game for me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can change the percentage for master player if you want to. <laughs> I don't really want to do that for <laughs> just so, just so that I can stay in. But yeah. I mean, just an idea. Yeah. I mean, it's getting close, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, just keep going. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, nice, good to know. And uh, finally, uh, we, we know where you are right now. I mm -hmm. uh, actually want to start talking a little bit about StarCraft II from the beginning mm -hmm. and where we are today, mm -hmm. here 2015. Uh, the last add-on is uh, mm -hmm. almost there. Yeah. And I want to know what you think about the StarCraft II developing from the very beginning, Wings of Liberty mm -hmm. and all. Uh, there have been drastic changes mm -hmm. lately, mm -hmm. which I think most of the people really like. Mm -hmm. But can you like give me your own opinion about like Wings of Liberty, mm -hmm. how the game started, how it felt like playing it, and so on, and now and how it is n right now? Yeah, so I think for Wings of Liberty, uh, the main goal was to take um, what we saw in StarCraft One and Brood War, and then try to do our best at making a better esport. But Obviously, looking back, there was a lot of issues with the game uh, that we addressed in Heart of the Swarm. So going into Heart of the Swarm, we said, okay, let's address all these issues, um, make the best game that we can make, um, do what's best for the game, things like that. And in Legacy of the Void, we kind of looked at it at, a, at it from a different angle. So we said, yeah, we can do more and we can improve on the game, but it's just a, such a small number of eyes looking at it, right? So we said, how can we work together with our community because StarCraft 2, as you know, has such a dedicated uh, community that just really wants to see StarCraft 2 be as best as it could be, right? So in Legacy of the Void, we heavily explored that end. And by working together with the community, I think we were able to achieve something that we couldn't have uh, just by ourselves. From your perspective, there have been a lot of changes, a lot of uh, beta, a lot of patches and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, I think about like some stuff like uh, swarm hosts mm -hmm. in uh, in Heart of the Swarm. What was your like, like, how, what felt the worst for you in, in at some place? Doesn't matter Wings of Liberty mm -hmm. or Heart of the Swarm. I think biggest were um, in Heart of the Swarm, swarm, swarm hosts, in Wings of Liberty. Those uh, games where we saw like harassment was not really happening anymore because everyone kind of figured out the optimal ways to defend against and it wasn't just zerg matchups but even in protoss versus terran also it was very common on maps like um uh scrap station scrap station where uh, both players are just macroing up there's no interaction ever and then it's like 200 versus 200 let's go okay i won or you won and then every game just looks the same every time right um so i think those were the moments that were the most, I guess, eye-opening and learning experience for me that we don't want things like that happening uh, going forward. I think it changed quite a lot with Heart of the Swarm. Besides mm -hmm. the Swarm host, I think mm -hmm. it have be, has been better. Mm -hmm. But no, we have like so many, mm -hmm. in my opinion, great changes. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you sit down and said, okay, 
now we we have a different mm -hmm. different uh, perspective of the game mm -hmm. and uh, like how did you start and what were like the first uh, thoughts of like okay what do we have to change so um, I guess it was towards the beginning of the development of Legacy of the Void. We just sat down and we just kind of asked ourselves, what do we want to do for Legacy of the Void? And then we had this list. And then I guess one of the people kind of brought up, what about these things that our community is talking about, right? And then we said, oh yeah, like we should at least like take our time to explore it fully, right? And then in the past, we would explore it internally. But we said, what if we had a longer beta where we can actually try these things out and then work with the community? And then when we started doing that, we kind of realized, oh, this is working so much better than if we were just working on it on, uh, just on our own. So we kind of took that and then expanded on these other areas that we were thinking about also. So I think in the end, we just ended up working together on all the things uh, during the beta. And I think that turned out great. Let's talk a little bit about the changes mm -hmm. uh, themselves. Uh, I mean, what changes do we have right now? I mean, I guess we both mm -hmm. know it, but for the people yeah. outside, what are the drastic changes uh, Blizzard did actually? Yeah, so a lot of things, right? Like uh, we have two new units per side. Uh, we have maybe four to five different uh, redesigned units uh, per side as well. And then we heavily explore, explored the macro mechanics changes. Um, so the current version that we're at right now is for Protoss and Zerg, it's a little bit less that you need to do for your non-pro level players, but the pro level players have just as much to do uh, compared to before. Uh, the econ changes, uh, you have to expand a little more aggressively now in Legacy of the Void, which creates a lot more action. So it reduces the chances of two people just sitting back and then defending and then 200 supply army. Uh, those cases will be reduced heavily, which is interesting. And I think another big thing is the Protoss warping changes. Uh, it's more difficult for Protoss players to go all in because you can't just do it off of one pylon now. Um, so Protoss players playing the game, I think, will be a lot more diverse in terms of strategy and in terms of planning ahead, uh, things like that will be a lot more interesting that way, I think. And the community was always that driven that they wanted Brood War back somehow. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this fast game, we mm -hmm. have no, no relaxing time, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do you have the feeling with the eco changes and so on, mm -hmm. it really is back where it should be? So I think that one's kind of a hard one because when people say, I want it to be more like Brood War, there's, there's like two factors to it, right? Like one is I want it like Brood War. And then two is like, I have this like, like fantasy and this dream that I remember because like, as you know, with everything, uh, it's just human nature to think of the past as something that's much better than yeah. it actually was, right? So it's really hard to fulfill on that fantasy, but for StarCraft II, we did our best to make sure that the game is as exciting as possible uh, at every stage of the game, and then it's action-packed, and there's, it's always different, even if you're watching the same matchup over and over. We hope that it plays out very differently in each game. Yeah, something I'm really interested in. Whenever you see something is perhaps in, perhaps imbalance mm -hmm. or I mean it's it's not going where you would like to have it, mm -hmm. how much time you guys actually need to change that and like test it and finally find a solution like an mm -hmm. average maps? So I think that's different per situation, right? Because Depends I, on what. Yeah. yeah, as you know, every balance problem is so different, but we do try to go as fast as possible. Sometimes it's not fast enough. And we do have situations where it feels like, man, in that scenario, we should definitely have acted faster. And I think the Swarm Host is a, is a good example of that. Um, but the difficulty for us there, I'm, I'm sure you mem remember what we said, it was because it was an issue that was only happening on the EU side, and we didn't really see a huge issue from the Korean side. Uh, like, uh, for example, I was talking to all the pro players here t or just yesterday, yeah. and I think it was Life that said, yeah, Swarm Host shouldn't have been nerfed because it was, there was no problems with it. Mm. And then I reminded him, yeah, maybe there was no problems on, in your games, yeah. but if you look at the, at the EU games, there was problems. And then he kind of agreed, like, yeah, it makes sense uh, why it was nerfed and so on, right? So, like, in those situations, we would definitely like to act much quicker going forward. Uh, one thing which I think is a, a little bit more personal thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is not always fair, I guess, I mean, there has had been a lot of uh, discussion about you, about your team, mm -hmm. like, hey, these guys, they're not listening to us and yeah. so on. Does it, like, really changes, uh, like, 
your life a little bit i mean it's your full-time job mm -hmm. and then there's like a lot of guys in the community talking about this stuff and i always felt like oh man the, he, i mean i'm 100 percent sure he's such a nice guy he tries his best mm -hmm. it's not only you mm -hmm. uh how does it feel like in this kind of situations so i guess it depends on the person i think i'm a lot more uh resistant to like like i don't get offended too easily um, but then some people on the team do have a tough time sometimes yeah um, but I think this whole process of working together and then kind of like working towards the same goal uh, on both sides kind of helped a lot with that because as, as you remember maybe look back one year ago looking at reddit yeah. there was a lot more negativity yeah. than there is now I mean I'm not saying like it's all positive now or anything like that but the difference is pretty clear but I think on that subject I think it's important for everyone in the community to kind of remember you don't have to present something in a super negative way for us to listen like we read it no matter what like if it's positive we read it if it's negative we still read it so um, it's all good and then I think I said this um, in the panel too but I think the important thing to remember is because we are working together for the better of StarCraft 2 and everyone out there um, including the people uh, who watch all of your stuff um, definitely want StarCraft 2 to be the most successful game in the world, right? And in order to do that, I think one part of it that we need to improve, or we could improve, is when new players um, come in, they go to the forums, they watch the streams. So if the streamers, um, forum posters, everyone else kind of helps to build a more friendly and a little bit more positive and productive discussion-based environment rather than a super negative one, I think that'll help a lot. Having your job is, mm -hmm. I think, for a lot of people watching right now, yeah. a dream. Mm -hmm. But how come that you like decided? I mean, decided to actually do this job, and mm -hmm. I mean, how do you like? Yeah, just uh, just like, actually made it uh, work. Like, what ha what do you have to do to work for Blizzard and do this job? Oh, uh, I think that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah. But um, for me personally, I was always into StarCraft and all Blizzard games all my life, um, and I wasn't necessarily into the competitive like competing side of things even though I did play at a fairly high level in uh, like Warcraft 3 or even in Guild War and so on but that was never my biggest passion uh, and then I never knew like growing up that I really wanted to do this but as I kind of um, started a job in this industry and I started working on the StarCraft 2 team I kind of realized yeah this is exactly where my passion is at and I think a good way to practice for doing something like this is kind of analyzing different issues and seeing so maybe if I were to say this is an issue um, and Blizzard also agrees that this is an issue I think of my own solutions and compare that to if that goes into the game like how's that how does that turn out right yeah. and then just kind of kind of predicting and seeing where you were wrong and why versus where you were right and why were you right and things like that and just analyzing the game that way I think helps a lot uh, you already said that uh, mm -hmm. forums uh, or stuff like Reddit, mm -hmm. uh, they change their opinion quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it happens because the feedback is there mm -hmm. more often and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could even change way more. You yeah. know why and how? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to Home Story Camp, that oh, would yeah. be actually <laughs> a great idea. Yeah. And I think the people would actually love it. Yeah. Uh, how big are the chances that we might see you uh, in December 17th to 20th yeah. uh, at, at a Home Story Camp? It would be a great honor and it would be super fun because I've never been in that type of an environment where all the pros, all the casters, everyone there is just so in like a, it's almost like a family type of environment, right? So uh, that'll be super fun uh, if I have a chance to go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I need an answer now. <laughs> I mean, not a real one, but I it's mean, not, I, mean I was trying me. to convince Mike, yeah. I was trying to convince Amy, yeah. I was trying to uh, convince uh, mm -hmm. Morton. Yeah. So what do I have to do? I do whatever you want to actually. Uh, I mean, just give me, give me the trick. Where do I have to go? I think it's not as much of a trick, but more so like, okay, what, what are we doing yeah. during that time frame? Because yeah. uh, oftentimes I was scheduled to go to some event and then it was canceled last minute because, oh, we have to do this yeah. this week, right? So barring nothing coming up, I think, and then me, def I definitely want to go. And I'm sure the people that you talk to, they don't mind it. <laughs> so it's a very high probability, I think. Um, but we'll see, right? Okay. But if not this time, there's always next time too. Okay. I really appreciate the interview. Thank you for your time. Uh, you deserve a lot of love, uh, you do a great job and uh, I hope the people realize that with your team, with uh, all the guys behind you and yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you so much.